All right. So in this video, I'm going to go through practice questions specifically focused towards the end of term one exam for grade nine ASP. So I'm going to go through the questions here. Unfortunately, it's annoying because they've given us the answer key, not the practice questions alone. So I will go through the answer key and explain how and why we got those answers. So question number one, this is saying identify which is a scalar and a vector. First thing to remember is scalar has size only, a number only, magnitude only, only. The vector has a size and size, I don't want any there, size, z, clearly I can't write today, let me try that one more time, a size, very good, that's a z, and direction, 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 okay, so, Speed is a scalar, it has a size only. The vector equivalent of speed would be velocity. So this is saying vector and it's written speed under vector, well, clearly that's going to be wrong. So I don't even need, need to look at this. That's wrong. Looking at this here, B, velocity, this, like I just said, is the same as speed but with a direction. So that's a vector. Looking over here now, we say displacement, no. Distance is the scalar. Displacement is the vector of the distance. Basically, it has a direction. Same idea, but it has a direction. Distance, we've agreed that is a scalar, so it is in the wrong column, so that is wrong. And that's obviously wrong now. It leaves us one option. Let's see the option. Displacement, vector, I agree. Speed, scalar, as we mentioned, I agree. That's why the answer is D. And in fact, this is a bit more of a clearer way to, to see the differences. You should probably know them all. Distance, of course, scalar. Displacement, vector. Speed is the scalar and the equivalent velocity is vector. Acceleration is the change of velocity. So acceleration uses velocity which has a direction, so does acceleration then. They're both vectors. Force also has a direction. You're pushing something in a direction. Gravity is pulling down. There is a direction for everything. Force is a vector. Work and energy are the same thing. It's energy and work. It's going to be a scalar because it has only got a value. I use a number of energy. I burn 200 joules of energy. It doesn't have a direction. We don't need to write a direction for it. Pressure is applied everywhere. Pressure is the force over area. We haven't studied it yet. We will do it next term. But force over area, a pressure, is just a simple scalar because it's applied across the whole place. So it's uniform. In that case, we will just keep it as scalar. All right. Now, something is the change in position divided by time. The change in position divided by time is basically x over t. If you were to check your formula sheet, you will probably see that the change in position, this triangle, this means change. Change of position over time, that's v in the formula sheet. v is velocity. Velocity is the change in position. Speed would have been change in distance over time. Not position, distance over time. Instantaneous is the exact point in an instant, the exact snapshot, like a speed camera when it catches you and it flashes and you get a fine. This is instantaneous velocity with a direction or instantaneous speed without a direction. For the whole time that it takes, we will call it average. Next, we have an average velocity. We want the displacement. Well, there's the formula. So you can do it two ways. You can write the numbers in and just shift solve, or you can rearrange. Um, I like to draw a little triangle here. I have x at the top. I have my v down here. I have my t over here. I hope you're familiar with this. If I wanted to find x, I multiply these two. If I wanted to find v, I will divide. If I wanted to find t, I would divide as well. What do I need? I need displacement. This is x. That's clearly v, speed, velocity. It's a v. And then this is my time. So, nice and easy, I will multiply the two together. I will do x equals v multiplied by t. All right, that's fine. So we have 20, and I'm going to multiply that by 10. 20 times 10, that's a 2. 20 times 10 is 200. 200. That is d. Now, over here, we have an athlete sprinting that way, stops, turns around, and walks slowly that way. This is asking for the average sprint velocity. Now you might think, if you want to find the average velocity, is the displacement divided by time. If he starts and finishes in the same place, you would pick zero. 
That's what you would might think. But no, this is specifically asking for the sprint velocity. And we say that the direction is positive. So right is positive. Left would be minus. So if I asked about the walk velocity, I would have to use the minus because it's going to the left. But no, I want the sprint velocity. Okay, fine. So velocity, same as above, displacement over time. Displacement we have, and um, this goes all the way to 50, 50, and I'm going to divide that by the time, 50 over 6. 50 over 6, I'm assuming, is 8.33, positive 8.33. If I asked you for the walk velocity, you would do the exact same thing. I would take that to become minus, and then divide by 4. I'll do it, why not? I will do minus 50, this is for the walk now. I'm going to divide that by the time it takes, and it takes 40 seconds for that one. So 50 over 40. That is for the walking velocity. If I asked you for the total velocity, that's final minus initial. I started and I finished at zero. So that would be zero divided by the time. Um, that's just going to be zero. No need to write anything. That's when I would pick A. Very nice. So let's move on. We have a car driving at this speed and then for another time at this speed what is the average velocity so we're going to go ahead and try to find it so we have a bit of an issue now two different speeds and two different times this is kind of easy because there's three hours in both but what you're supposed to do is find the total distance and then you divide the distance over the total time so we're going to find the total distance find that's a d find distance. Let's do it. Distance, as we said, speed times time. So I'm going to do, uh, let's see, d equals, I'm just going to write it now, 97 times 3 plus, I have the other one, 72 times 3. Now calculators are dumb. If you're going to directly put it into your calculator, it won't realize that you're having two different things. So I'm going to put a little bracket over it. Once you find the total distance, you multiplied uh, these two, and then you multiplied these two, you then will find the velocity. So the velocity, this is step two, the velocity is total distance, total distance, that's the answer up here, divided by total time, total time. And that is, of course, three plus three, six hours. So I'm going to write whatever answer I get up here, Let's quickly check what that would be. I'm going to write 97 times it by 3 plus 72 times it by 3. 72 times 3. And I'm going to get 507. 507. I'm going to take 507. I'm going to divide that by the total time. 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 3 is 6. Divided by 6, I will get 84.5, which is basically... 85. Now, you can see that they're all saying 85. Well, that didn't really help. Well, it turns out I didn't really need to do the calculation, did I? Because the number's the same. What I did need to know is the unit for velocity. Usually, it's meters per second. In this case, it's basically just distance divided by time, right? Distance, which is meters per second, which is time. Kilometers per hour, distance divided by time. Kilometers per hour, distance over time. So actually, all we have to do was, first of all, let's just go ahead and erase all that writing, no need. All we have to do is check the units. Velocity is kilometers per hour. So this is kind of a really simple question. Overly simple. I think they might try to trick you. They might have to make you do some calculations in the exam. All right, anyway, let's continue. Now, we have this here. We have to find the distance the boy travels, the displacement, the speed and velocity. Four things. Very, very important to know. We're starting here. It's saying north is this way. So that's north. Okay, if that's north, this must be the opposite of north, which is south. North, south. Okay, fine. Let's see. Starting from where? He starts from the bakery. He travels to the cafe and then to the art gallery. He goes that way, four kilometers and then back that way, four again, and all the way to the arc kilometers, four plus 2.5. So what we're gonna do is find the total distance, add everything, four plus four plus 2.5. They've done it here, four plus 6.5. Of course, four plus 
is 6.5. Total distance is everything, 10.5. However, now it's asking for displacement. Remember what I mentioned earlier? Displacement is from start to finish only. Just this part only. The displacement is 2.5 only. Remember, it's a vector, so we have to have a direction. We will say left or south, because they wrote north, we can say south. But if it's just a picture, you're fine just to write left. You must write some sort of direction. Very nice. Then it's asking for the total speed, not total speed, the average speed. Speed is distance over time. Like I mentioned, total distance we have. And we'll divide it by the time it takes. And it took two hours. And that's the answer there, 5.25. Ten and a half divided by two. Then I need to find the velocity. The velocity is displacement divided by time. The displacement, as we've already written here, is 2.5 divided by time. If you got this wrong, by the way, and you use the wrong answer here, yes, you will lose the mark here getting it wrong, but you will still get full marks here getting it correct because you will get punished for the error only once. If you carry the error forward to the next question, you will not get punished again. So even if it's wrong here, don't worry, you can still get full marks here. We call that error carried forward. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, next we're moving on to some slopes. So I'll do a couple of slope questions here before I end the video because it's going to get too long. Um, let's look at this. The position time graph, what is the average velocity? So as we know, velocity is the displacement or change in position over time. Very similar to a graph, that's like me saying rise over run. Rise over run. How do I know that? That's my position divided by time. Rise over run. In order for me to find the velocity then, I just need to find the slope. That's all. I have a starting, and you can pick any final. I'll just keep it simple. I'll do the start and the end. I'm going to do rise over run. Y2, if you remember, Y2 minus Y1. And X2 minus X1. Let's do it. Y2, that's the final one, which is here. That is 25 minus Y1. So let's go here. This is Y1, 25 minus 5. And I'm going to divide that by X2. This is the second point. X2 is 5 minus X1. That's way over here now. 5 minus, this is the X, that's 0. So all I'm doing is going to just simply write 20 over 5, which of course is 4. So that's how you get that answer. In this one, you're comparing the velocities. We are going to compare three different velocities. Really straightforward. Bigger slope means faster. So Ahmed is going the fastest. Then Ali, then Sef. So C would be best because they're saying uh, Ahmed is greater than Ali, greater than Sef. So C is the best option here. Uh, let's see what I can do in the next one. Let's go ahead and do this one. And then I will stop this video. From this graph, identify if it's moving towards or away from the origin in the first four seconds. So here's a graph. There is time. There is the first four seconds here. Here. Origin is zero. I started 20 meters away, far away, and look, I'm coming towards the origin. I'm coming towards the center. So if you were standing here, if you were standing here, this is a number of a timeline. If you're just standing here, so whoever this is, is coming towards you. So towards the origin. Velocity, just like we did before. Slope, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. I will pick two points. I will pick here and here. Now, don't be confused. Now, this answer key is just saying x. It is not saying x as in the x. No, it's saying x as in position. Because remember, position is x. This is the x-axis. Don't get confused. I will write it like this, y2 minus y1, just so you don't get confused. And this is the x-axis, x2 minus x1. It's the way you will not get confused, because don't be confused with position being x, because that's the symbol, with this x-axis. That is time, which is t, which is why they wrote t. Anyway, slope. You know how to do the slope. y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, there is y2, this is going to be 0, minus y1, which is 20, 0 minus 20. Divided by x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is 0. So you will get minus 5. So it's a negative slope because it's going down. That makes sense. If you wanted to find the speed in the last second, well, speed, again, same idea, you will see that the speed will be distance over time, position over time. You will do here, this is 5, 
and this is a time of 1, same thing, do the slope, you will do 5, well, y2, right? So you will have minus 5, minus 0, divided by 5, minus 4, you will get 5. Fine. But, because it said speed. Speed is scalar. Don't need the direction. We just need to write this. If you want to find the y-intercept, well, it's clearly showing you in the graph where it cuts the y-axis. It cuts it at 20. That is the intercept over here. So I'm going to go over this graphs of motion in another video because a few other things we need to think about. Okay.